Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam explains the different methods for trying out Linux. Because he's such an awesome, super nice guy, Adam will even explain the pros and cons to each approach. In this video, I'm going to go over five, yes, five different ways that you can try out Linux. The first method is probably the hardest to set up, and that is doing a full-blown hard drive install. Now, the pros to this approach is that you are going to get the fastest possible speeds using Linux. The downside to this approach is that if you're trying to set up like a dual boot between the Windows operating system and the Linux operating system, it's a little bit daunting for new users. You're going to have to learn how to partition. Uh, a lot of the Linux distributions kind of guide you through this, but still there is a slight risk that you could lose some of your data. So the other option to this approach is that if you can't stand Windows and you are totally into Linux, you could just wipe out Windows and do a full-blown install of the Linux operating system. I should probably note this is the approach that I have decided to take. Windows is okay. Um, it has some pros to the operating system, I guess, but I definitely prefer to use Linux. But I do need the Windows operating system for some of my gaming. I mean, I know I can configure this in Wine and all that, potentially, but I just don't want to waste time with that. So what I have chosen to do is set up a dual boot system, because uh, I want the fastest possible speed with Linux. So I have Linux on one partition, Windows on my other, and that is how I've chosen to set up uh, my particular setup. This next approach should be dead simple for Windows operating system users. So what you're going to do is you're going to download the um, uh, an Ubuntu type distribution. You're going to burn it to a CD. And then after you burn it to a CD, you should have access to the wubi.exe file. Now the way this works is it installs the Ubuntu system just like a normal Windows program. So dead simple to use. And in the future, if you want to remove remove the Linux operating system install, uh, all you do is you go to add remove programs on the Windows side of things and then you just remove it just like a normal program. So this is dead simple to use. Um, uh, I've heard great things about it. I am not going to cover it in future videos just because I like a lot more control when I'm doing my Linux installs. Um, so if you want more information, click on the link below. Uh, this is not one of my videos. This is just a video that I found that might be helpful and hopefully it's still up by the time you're watching my video. The third method is just to run a Linux type distribution off of a live CD. Now the advantage to this approach is that, uh, actually there are a few. Um, one is that you can use this as a rescue CD. So for example, let's say you're using the Windows operating system, a file gets corrupted and you can't boot into Windows. And a lot of computers these days do not come with the Windows rescue CD. So you can actually use a Linux rescue CD and get all of your data off of your hard drive uh, if it's been a while since you've backed up your Windows uh, hard drive and rescue all of that precious data. Now, another advantage to using uh, a live CD is that it is really, really great as far as not touching any of your hard drives unless you start mounting your hard drive. So what I mean by this is when you put in the Linux live CD and you boot from the live CD, uh, you are not booting off of your hard drive. So you can play around with Linux, you can mess around with things, and it is not doing anything to your hard drive. Now, the disadvantage to this approach is that it's a little bit slower. Okay, a lot slower. Basically, um, reading and writing uh, files um, is only as fast as your CD-ROM drive. And let's face it, that's pretty slow. Um, the other disadvantage is now some computers are not even coming with CD-ROMs, so uh, this option may not even be viable for you. And finally, the last major disadvantage to this approach is that any settings that you save, whether, you, uh, whether you're trying to install software or something, really can't be done because it's just a CD-ROM. Remember I said we're not saving anything to the hard drive and you really can't save any of the files back to the CD-ROM. It's just read only. So you're not going to be able to play around with installing software and changing any of the settings. So that is kind of a major disadvantage when you're trying out Linux. Um, it is great to try out a distribution before you actually install it, make sure all of your hardware works. So I do recommend trying a live CD, but it may not be the best approach in the long run. I should give a quick mention to Canopsix. Uh, it's one of the few Linux distributions that 
uh, are geared towards being only a live CD. Uh, be sure to check out the show notes. I did put a link to Canopsix in there. Um, that way, if you want more information on it or you want to use it as a rescue CD yourself, uh, feel free to check it out. The fourth method is probably one of my absolute favorite ways to try out Linux. Basically, you're going to use a USB to install the Linux operating system onto, and then from there, it's going to be just like a live CD, except you're using a USB stick. Now, the advantage to this approach is that it is so much faster than a CD-ROM. Basically, it's the limitation of the uh, read and write speeds of the actual USB stick, and the only disadvantage is that um, you need hardware to be able to support this. So most computers these days allow you to boot into a USB stick, so hopefully that won't be an issue for you. Um, and the only other small disadvantage is that it's obviously not as fast as a full-blown um, Linux operating system install. There's a program on the Windows side of things that allows you to set up a persistent uh, space on the USB, provided you have a big enough USB stick. And what this allows you to do is you can download software uh, to the actual USB stick, you can save all of your Linux settings to the USB stick, and basically everything feels like it would if you were running it right from your hard drive, except it doesn't touch the hard drive, it only saves stuff to the USB stick. So um, it's awesome stuff, and uh, that'll definitely be uh, in a video, and hands down uh, one of the, my opinion, the best ways to experience Linux without actually messing up your hard drive. Perhaps I shouldn't say messing up your hard drive. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that with the USB stick, you're reading and writing everything to the USB stick, thereby bypassing anything on the actual hard drive, unless you mount stuff and all that other stuff. But in any event, you're pretty much minimizing any risk to your very precious uh, Windows operating system uh, that's actually on your physical hard drive just because you're bypassing all that with the USB stick. The fifth method is using a program called VirtualBox. So the way this works is essentially you will be running two operating systems at the same time. So um, generally speaking, I'm assuming you're running the Windows operating system. So in this case, in this scenario, the Windows operating system will be the host and then you'll install VirtualBox in Windows and then you'll be able to install another operating system in VirtualBox. So the installed operating system in VirtualBox will be the guest operating system, and I'm assuming that you would set that up to be uh, a Linux distribution. So the nice approach to this is that there's no rebooting required, um, there's no messing around with partitions, and you have access to all the goodness of Windows, and you have all the access to all the goodness of Linux. Um, the major downside to this approach is that the guest install operating system is certainly not going to be as fast as the host operating system just because everything is run uh, virtually. So you're sharing a ton of resources. I mean, come on, you're running two operating systems at the same time. So that's the major downside. Um, and it also requires a little bit beefier of a system. Um, I recommend probably two gigs of RAM, okay, I would probably four gigs of RAM, and at least dual core, maybe even a quad core, uh, to get uh, a decent feeling operating system uh, in a virtual box. Um, but the great thing is I run virtual box all the time, um, and that's to uh, test out uh, ideas and uh, uh, software uh, without actually messing up my, um, uh, my Linux install. Well, that's probably enough information for now. Um, future videos will definitely cover the four methods. Uh, the only method I will not cover is the Wubi install, as I've already stated. So we're going to go over the USB method, we're going to go over a live CD, we're going to go over VirtualBox, and a full-blown install. Um, honestly, with all these options out there, there's really no excuse not to give Linux a go, just to see perhaps if it is for you. Uh, at least use it as a rescue CD. Um, it has some awesome capabilities. Uh, as always, uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com, and thanks for watching.